Can you really start a farm with no money? In this video, we'll give you all of our tips and tricks on how we did it. Give us a thumbs up and stay tuned till the end. Tip number one. Where should you start? This is where we started. In the damn woods. <laughs> in the woods. With a quite a bit of a slope. Start where you're at, right here, right now. Get it. You don't have to have land, per se, to start a farm. If you're in an apartment and have no land, you can start planning your farm. That's the beginning of a farm, is a plan. Everything starts with a plan. That's right. Number Which... two, how much land do you need? Well, it depends on how much farm you want, I guess. We, we went searching for... One acre. One acre and bought six. And like we said, it's all hill and trees. So it's a lot of work. But you can start with any land that you currently have. You can farm even just on a quarter acre of land. You know, you can have rabbits and chickens and you can have a, a decent sized garden on that little bit of land. You can even have some goats on that land, honestly. Don't yeah. go overboard. Goat math is a real thing, y'all. Goat math. Tip number three, evaluate your space. When you're looking at your land, you want to make sure that you're looking for the right things. Where is the sun hitting the most? That's the perfect spot to put a garden. Perfect for the garden. Um, is there streams running through the property? Can you use those streams to water animals? Like for instance, we have a creek bed down at the very bottom here of our property but we really can't tap into that because one, it's dry most of the time, but for two, there's it's really hard to get water to flow uphill. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and this is a fairly large hill. As you can see, on our property, we actually happen to have big power lines. Big power lines. So that kind of puts a little bit of a damper on part of what we can use on our property. It happens to be on the flattest part of the property. Of course. <laughs> um, but you want to you want to take a look at your land and figure out what you can place where to utilize your land the, at its best. At its best, that's right. And don't let trees and hills deter you from doing it, because trees in the long run could be some money makers. You know, you cut them down, you chop them up, and you split them for, you know, you can sell ricks of wood and people buy tons of it where it gets cold yeah and you can use the wood yourself as well if you have a wood stove inside you know also brush as you can see back here we've got a lot of it and it's not always a bad thing to have on your property utilize what you have guys if you have a ton of brush like this get a couple of goats they'll eat it down for you and clear your land for a nice garden and it'll feed them without an extra cost to you guys yeah, and pigs, you can move the pigs over after you have the goats there, you know, and they'll mill up the dirt and get all the rocks out for you and level out some land, possibly. And don't forget, what they leave behind is great fertilizer for the garden. Tip, Tip number, number four. four. Have a business plan. <laughs> you have to know your finances to get into something like this you have to have a plan to know what you want to do with your business with your farm and those are things that you have to take into consideration whenever you're planning out your farm that's right if you don't know what you want from your business then everything could go downhill pretty quickly you don't want to put a ton of time into something and not know where, what you want out of it. So you definitely want to set some goals and know what you want out of your farm as a business. 
and there's even government help when Grants. it comes to finance so you know there's lots of things to consider and sit down when you're making that plan of yours um, we'll get into more of that later in this video but just be sure that you know exactly what you want out of this because it's a if lot of work. If you don't, you're going to mess it up. <laughs> it's very true. Even if you do, you're going to mess things up because as we all know, shit happens, y'all. <laughs> Tip number five, be resourceful. This guy is the best at being resourceful. I try. Lots of things that I find are on the Facebook Marketplace, uh, Craigslist. We I find loads of wood hanging out just on the side of the road places. I do a lot of driving for my job, and it helps me actually be able to find some of these things um, that we can bring home for us to use for all sorts of different projects that we do. And we find uh, lots of our animals the same way as we found lots of our lumber and other supplies. You can find a lots of cheap animals. People are trying to downsize farms all of the time. All the time. People get into animals and then realize that that's not for them. And so they're selling for pretty cheap. Just whenever you do it that way, make sure that you do a full checkup on them and make sure that they have the right... Uh, tests that need to be taken and um, they're up to date on all of their shots and things like that because you really don't want to get into sick animals. It'll make farming so much harder and it when does. you're trying to um, start a farm with no money you definitely don't want to get into uh, having extra issues right off the bat. Vets are expensive. Tip number six. Do it yourself. If it can be done by you, it will save you money. Yes. A hundred percent. So many people think that they have to pay for pre-built items or uh, pay for people to come and build things for them because they don't know how to do it. And we didn't either. But We still don't know how to do a lot of things. But let me tell you, we built this greenhouse that we're in right now. And it works fantastic. It is very functional. Um, we've built lots of different things around here. Everything that we have needed, we actually built. From pig pens to rabbit cages to feed holders. Um, our chicken coop. Chicken coop. Uh, uh, the milking stand. I mean, anything you can think of that you would need on your farm. We've figured out how to build ourselves to save money. Hell, and we even built our deck that we have. That's right. Everything was out of scraps, guys. It's so much easier than you think. You just have to put the energy into doing it. Go do a little bit of research. Let me tell you, you can learn to do just about anything on YouTube. We use YouTube a lot. <laughs> not only do we have our channel. <laughs> not just for our channel. <laughs> Which, if you haven't already, go hit that bell and subscribe. Definitely. YouTube is extremely resourceful. So in farming or homesteading, uh, like we said earlier, lots of things happen. And it's, it's hard to adapt to that. So you're learning stuff every day. Uh, new things. Uh, you're relearning old things that you thought you knew, but now you don't quite remember. <laughs> right. It's all trial and error. Trial and error. So you're learning how to be a farmer every day. Don't let the idea of doing things yourself put you away from getting things done now. Because, I mean, like we said, we're not carpenters. We're not construction people. But... If we can do it, y'all can do it. Definitely. And let me tell you, everything that we do is a little janky, you know, uh, but it works. It's functional. That is the key, is that you make things that are functional. It may not look the best. It may not be the most magnificent, but you know what? It's yours, and you put your hard work into it, and 
it functions properly. That is the main point, functionality. That's right. Tip number seven, find innovative ways to grow your own produce. For instance, we have these grow bags here and here <laughs> and there uh, that we are growing potatoes in. A lot of people don't think of gardening when they think of farming, but gardening is a huge, huge aspect of farming. There are a lot of farmers that don't have animals at all. It's just gardening. Right. So you can do gardening, you can do animals, or you can do both. And we've got lots of different ways that you can start your gardening right away. There's the grow bags, there's pots, like five gallon buckets that you can get for free. People are just getting rid of them. There's lots of companies that are that use them for food products and you can just go up and get them. Now, if you get some that aren't used for food products, make sure you clean them out more than once and you sterilize them and make sure they're super clean before you put any of your produce in there. That's right. Hydroponics. Hydroponics. You can do vertical gardening. If you don't know what vertical gardening is, it's where you plant and your plants just vine up it. You know, like using a trellis or hell, you can take a piece of lattice and set it up on a side of a wall and you can grow a vine up that. You know, there's right. all sorts of vining fruits and, and vegetables that you can get. You can even grow your tomatoes up a trellis. And I, I think a lot of people don't realize that that's actually something that you can do. So um, there's tomatoes, there's beans, there's peas, there's even vining squash. There's lots of different things that you can grow up vertically that will save space. And there's even square foot gardening, which... Our we first did. garden was a square foot garden, and we grew a lot of things in that. We actually, yeah, we did. C considering how small it was, uh, we had very prolific plants and... Like 20-pound watermelons. <laughs> yeah. Until the cows came down and had some fun with the corn. <laughs> right. But that's another story for that's, another time. That goes into having small spaces to garden and you can do it on a much larger scale, you know. And if you're trying to make money off of gardening, then you'll definitely want to know what's in demand and, so that you can figure out what's a money maker, uh, what you're gonna be able to sell at the produce stand or what you're gonna be able to sell at the farmer's market, whichever way you use it. Uh, we're gonna have a produce stand at our house, I believe. Yeah, we're gonna do a... Um... Farm stand. Farm stand. And what you want to do when you're starting your farm is to have low cost things that will bring a high profit. So you want to really be making sure that you know what is in demand in your area. Research, research, research. Yes. Oh, hey, and then you got to do some more research. <laughs> Absolutely. You really just get to know the locals in your area and ask them what it is that they are looking for that they can't seem to find somewhere else. Networking is a big deal. Tip number eight, animal necessities. It's the bare necessities. Just the bare necessities. What the heck? <laughs> All right, so with animals, you can go with just your bare necessities. They're going to need shelter, food, water, bedding, and um, they're going to need some type of health care. And fencing. You definitely need something to be able to keep them in. Containment. Containment, yes. So um, let's just talk about a few of the things we've used around here to do it with no money. This fencing is actually conveyor belt, y'all. And it works great for holding our animals. It's really good for not getting goat horns stuck in it. And it attaches to the fence posts really well. Also, it looks really neat. It's pretty cool. This hay feeder, we just found on the side of the road somewhere. And it actually had wheels and a handle. We cut off the handle so the goats couldn't get stuck in it. Took the wheels off because we didn't need them. And it holds the hay just fine. That was perfect. Um, we also have lots of other things. How about our pig shelters? So what we used for our pigs' houses was some 250-gallon uh, tanks that 
a food company had they had stored fat in there or oil I guess and all we did was clean them out a little ways you know get get the oil off of them cut a hole in the front of it and throw some bedding in there and boom bang you have pig houses that's right and they love them they just need a windbreaker that's really all it's there for is to keep them out of the weather and keep them out of the wind right. you know that's really all they need the bare necessity um yeah so with your animals you want to make sure that you have the stuff and there's so many different ways that you can get those things. You don't have to use pre-built barns. You don't have to build an extravagant hotel for all of your animals to live in. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we have we have placed our animals in pallet walls. We held pigs <laughs> inside a pallet wall that we just built. The and pallet palace. It's the pallet palace. And if you guys haven't seen that video, I will uh, add a link in the description for you guys. And right up here. You're also going to have animal maintenance to take care of from time to time. You know, trimming goat hooves if you have goats, you know, giving your vaccines to the animals. You can do things yourself that way. Or, you know, if you don't feel comfortable doing that, you can call the local vet. Sometimes they do house calls. Uh, they're definitely more expensive than doing it yourself. And there's a lot of ways to learn how to do it yourself as well. It's pretty simple. Oh my simple. gosh, and the goat's totally going to take over the film. Pretty simple <laughs> to do things yourself as well. Also, a lot of people, whenever they're breeding their animals, they'll send, um, they'll send them to the vet or take them to the vet to find out if they are pregnant. <laughs> and there are easier ways to do that. We actually draw the blood from our goats ourselves and send it into the labs to get our tests back to find out if they're pregnant and to test them for any diseases. And it costs like $5 versus $125 per blood test at our local vet. Also, you know, if you don't have goats and you have pigs, you can test their pee. I'm sure if you pay attention to our channel that you've seen us walking around trying to catch pig pee. If you haven't, we will definitely put those videos down in the description and a link up here. So we ordered ours online through a lab and I think they were 10 bucks and we got, we have multiple tests to, that came in a kit, you know, and all you do is you gather the pee and you stick it into the little vial and you shake it up and boom, you know whether or not she's pregnant and and then if you wait 10 minutes it'll tell you how, how far, far along, along they are roughly roughly how far along they are it's but not exact right there are holistic ways that you can care for your animals as well wormers and things like that and um they're a lot cheaper than taking them to the vet so definitely do your research on what ways you can deworm your animals and, and care for your animals in that aspect so that you're not constantly having to pay large vet bills. We cannot say this enough. Research, research, go to the face. Research. <laughs> and some more research. And a goat. Tip number nine, profitable assets. How you're going to make money, where you're going to make money. How much money are you gonna make? Um, you need to look at what items on your farm are going to help bring in the money. Cha ching Yeah, you need low cost, high profit. That's, That's what you need. Let's take a look at what animals we have and what kind of profit we could possibly make from them. Chickens can be meat, egg makers. You can also sell eggs to incubate and grow up for more chickens. So that's three things that you can profit from having chickens. Goats. If you plan to have them for dairy, make milk, and then you can sell the babies. And then there's also the option to sell them for meat. Lots of people eat goat meat. With pigs, same thing. You have meat pigs and then people sell the babies to make back money to help pay for the feed costs and housing costs to keep them. So our ducks, you will be using them for meat ducks as well as for eggs to sell and to incubate and as well as to eat. Rabbits, we use for meat and we sell the babies. You know, people love rabbits for pets and other people are starting their homesteads. And they also produce fur. Whenever you use your rabbits for meat, you can use their feet for 
rabbit's feet. Rabbit's feet to sell as a craft. You can use their ears and sell them as dog treats, which our dog loves them. Love them. And then you can make crafts with the fur or just sell the fur itself. So rabbits actually have a pretty high profit if you're just starting out and it's very low cost. And then there's the garden side of everything. How we make profit with our garden is by selling plant starts, selling seeds, people can come and buy produce. Tip number 10, minimalism is key. Don't go overboard when you start your farm. That's right. Do not exceed your knowledge and do not exceed your physical ability. It's really easy to go overboard. So you just really, really, really want to go back to that, have a business plan and think about what you want and start small. Because <laughs> starting really big can cause you to burn out, you know, or you can start with animals that you find out you don't really like and you end up losing money because you're just trying to get rid of them. Just don't want to stretch yourself too thin. Even in gardening, you can get a little ahead of yourself and we've done it. Yes. We started way more than we actually had time to put into the ground and killed off a lot of plants, which in turn lost us some money. So take this tip from us and learn from our mistakes so that you don't make those same mistakes. That's, that's why we're giving you guys all of this information because we've been through it. We already did all of this. We messed up a lot. Don't, don't start off huge. Start off something small, something simple, something that you've done a lot of research on. If you start small, you'll get the feel for things first, and then you'll be able to know whether this is what you want to do or if it's not. Even if you decide that you don't want to do any of it anymore, you're not at a huge loss. You know, if you started so big and then you decide that you don't want to do it no more, and you may go bankrupt. It's very possible. Tip number 11, time management. We're probably the worst example of time management. We are getting better. We are working on our time management. Uh, we have a lot of issues with it. Like forgetting to eat. We forget to eat all the time because we're out working busy. You take care <laughs> of yourself. You know in with the time management yeah and and finances too you need to make sure that you set aside time for your finances because if you don't have it scheduled in you're probably gonna forget about it and if you forget to pay the finances that you have to pay then things could get really bad very quick make sure that you carve out time for all the different things because guys running a farm can take all of your time <laughs> all Will of it most likely take all of your time yeah you really have to set aside time for yourself and and for all of the other things your family yourself all of those things tip number 12 number 12 it's the freaking end yeah what what well stay till you get the whole tip yeah first, just though. hold on a minute the whole tip it's not quite <laughs> not quite the end <laughs> except assistance guys if somebody offers to help you take let the em. help let them help you we are like the worst example at not letting people help us. <laughs> we try to think that we can, ah, it'll be okay. We don't need your help. We'll we got just, this. We'll we just do, do it on our own. We don't want to burden people. Well, you know what? If they're asking, they actually want to help. Yeah. So let them help. Most Some likely, people might even have skills that you don't have that are willing to help you. Let people help you. People want to help. Friends, family, neighbors, let people help if they want to help you. And, and then there's the other side of things, accepting assistance. What kind of government assistance can you get? For being a farm and a farmer, then you can get grants uh, to build a barn or you can get grants to do other things like a high on your farm, even. a high tunnel. There's all kinds of grants that you can get for agriculture and being a farm. You can get a loan. I don't much care for getting loans. But it is assistance if you absolutely it's, need if it. If you absolutely need it and you can get get it for yourself, you know, why Start not? Start small. Minimalism is key. Yes. You don't want to go out and get a $200,000 loan no. and then not have a way to pay it back. Because like I said before, you'll go bankrupt and that's not what you're trying to do. That's right. What we're trying to do is be sustainable. On and, our own. And start with as little money as possible. 
that is what we are trying to do. And that's what we do every day. Every day. We make things work for us, even if they weren't meant for that specific thing. <laughs> Conveyor belt fence. And um, how about trampoline mesh uh, bird netting? Things, yeah. things work in different ways. You just have to think outside of the box, guys. Outside of the box. All right, guys. So that is all 12 of our <laughs> tips for you guys. We hope that this video was informative and helpful. And if it was, give us a big thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe and hit that bell and share it out to your friends and family that might also benefit from this. Trying to start a farm or a homestead? Maybe we can help a little. And by sharing this out, that helps the YouTube algorithm know that you liked what you saw and it'll push it out to other people and help us grow our farm too. Thanks everyone. Bye guys. That's the end. Bye.